Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, will you please wait? Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, why do you have to run from us? Why do you have to run from us, Mr. Mayor? Spending more on policing per capita anywhere else in the world has been a failure. Well, he once sponsored a Cook County board resolution to reduce police funding. And today, candidate for mayor Brandon Johnson said he would cut the Chicago police budget by at least $150 million. He proposes to spend billions of dollars more on social services, including mental health and youth employment. Mr. Johnson, you attended an event in 2020. It was called We Don't Call Police. And that same year, you said it was a political goal to defund the police. Here is what you said. The President of the United States, the former President of the United States, I'm sorry, President Barack Obama, uh, took it one step further as well. And, and basically said that the, the, the effort of the defund police movement lost an audience because of, of that, um, that slogan, I guess is what, what he's calling it, which, which I don't look at it as a slogan. It's, it's, actually, it's an actual real political goal. Okay, so we need to talk about woke Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson because this guy continues to make an embarrassment out of himself, out of the city of Chicago, and definitely out of the people who voted for him and voted for his woke policies. So over a week ago, we had an unfortunate situation in Chicago. There was this officer named Luis Huesca. He was slain in the line of duty. Well, I think he was actually off duty. It was in the middle of the night, about three o'clock in the morning. He was on his way home from work and he was deleted. He was carjacked and deleted by some hoodlum. They found him bleeding out and unfortunately he didn't make it. So there was this big manhunt going on in Chicago trying to find this person, this criminal who did this. He's recently been found and charged with first degree murder and some other crimes along with his accomplices. And guess what? It's not his first offense. This guy been down this road before, yet he wasn't in jail. He was out there in the middle of the night, carjacking and not afraid at all to shoot up a police officer. And these politicians, especially these Democrat politicians, when stuff like this happens in their cities because they're the ones who run these big crime infested cities like Chicago, like Baltimore, like New York City. When these things happen to these police officers, the politicians, like the mayors, the governors, they try to pretend like they care. They say, oh, let's pray, let's put out a statement, let's go to the funeral, stuff like that. They don't give a damn. They try to use the dead bodies of police officers as props to get a photo op, to say, look at me, I care, I'm at the funeral, I'm gonna give a speech, please vote for me again. Let the police union endorse me, all that crap. But they don't give a damn about the actual life, the health and well-being of their police officers. So when this guy died, his family, they know. They know what's up. They know Brandon Johnson has supported defunded the police. They know how the Democrats in Chicago, the governor, they have demonized police. The police nationwide have been demonized by liberals, by Democrats for the last several years. So they told Brandon Johnson that he's not welcome to the funeral. They know he's just another slimy, cell phone crime Democrat. And they're not gonna let him use their family member, the body of their family member as some political prop. So you heard him saying at the beginning of the video that defund the police is not a slogan, but it's a real political goal because this is what this man really wants. But he wants to backtrack on it now saying, no, 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 that's not really what I meant. You made multiple statements. You attended events talking about futures without police and all of this other crap. He's definitely not supporting the police officers. He's a soft on crime, woke Democrat, as I keep saying. We all heard that infamous statement that he gave after that team takeover where the teams were running around looting, committing vandalism, breaking into people's homes and their stores, stealing cars. He came out there the next day and defended them. The first thing he tried to do is paint them as, oh, just some weak, frail little children that need to be caught up. When most of them were young adults, 18 plus, early 20s. But you had some high school age out there too. But he called them all children to try to soften the public backlash. He said, these are just a bunch of children. They don't need to be demonized. They don't have anything to do. They're committing vandalism. They're carjacking people. They're looting because they don't have anything else to do. So by doing stuff like that, he basically gave them the green light. He gave them a pass 
on doing that. So guess what? They're still doing it. Another thing he did was he got rid of shot spotters. So that's some technology that they use that a lot of police departments use in these big crime infested cities to detect gunshots. And this allows them to respond to a possible crime scene way faster then a call will come. Sometimes the calls never come to 911 dispatchers. So shot spotter goes off and says, yeah, you need to check out this area over here. And maybe they can make an arrest. Maybe they can save somebody's lives. Maybe they can save somebody's property. But Brandon Johnson got rid of it in Chicago. He canceled the contract. He said it's racist. Shot spotter is allowing too many black criminals to be arrested. <laughs> so they're getting rid of it in Chicago because, again, cell phone crime. Is racist to arrest black criminals? <laughs> this man has lost his mind. So that's just a brief summary. I could go on and on, but that's a brief summary of Brandon Johnson on his political views on crime, where he stands with the police, where he stands in defending criminals, helping criminals to commit more crime, basically. So he was unwelcome at the funeral. He and J.B. Pritzker, they were both told, stay away, don't come here, because we know how y'all are, and we've heard all these BS statements that y'all made. That's what the family basically told them, paraphrasing. But they stayed away because they didn't want to be embarrassed like Kathy Hoka was in New York. There was a similar situation a little while ago in New York, and she showed up to the funeral. She wanted to use the dead body as a prop, as a political prop, and she got kicked out. So J.B. Pritzker, Brandon Johnson, they stayed away, but... Brandon Johnson ended up being embarrassed anyway. He didn't want to be embarrassed like the New York governor was, but he got embarrassed because he showed up to a prayer meeting. And after he left the meeting, some reporters approached him <laughs> to ask him about this criminal. Look, we just arrested this hoodlum who deleted the cop. We want to ask you about this. We want to ask you other stuff. This man ran. This man literally ran away. Let's take a look at this. Johnson attended a National Day of Prayer service this morning. Political reporter Marianne Ahern was there to get his reaction to the arrest last night of the suspect in the murder of Chicago police officer Luis Wesca. Good afternoon. Mayor Johnson spoke at the prayer service event and we tried afterwards to ask him questions after learning of Xavier Tate's arrest to see what he thought. However, his aides took him out the alley where his car was waiting and he refused to stop. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, will you please wait? Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, why do you have to run from us? Why do you have to run from us, Mr. Mayor? As you recall, the family requested not only the mayor, but also the governor not attend Officer Weska's funeral on Monday. They felt that politicians had given offenders in general too many chances. Also, as of yet, no statement yet from the mayor's office on Tate's arrest. So my thoughts on Brandon Johnson is that this guy is fragile. This guy is not ready for this job. It's too much for him. Being the mayor of a crime infested large city like this, a large woke city, where you have a bunch of woke activists with heavy influence on political policy in the city, he's not ready for this. I saw it in his face months ago when he was ranting about Texas Governor Greg Abbott for sending illegal immigrants up there to Chicago. The issue is not just how we respond in the city of Chicago, it's the fact that we have a governor, a governor, an elected official in the state of Texas that is placing families on buses without shoes, cold, wet, tired, hungry, afraid, traumatized, and then they come to the city of Chicago where we have homelessness, we have mental health clinics that have been shut down and closed. You have people who are seeking employment. The, the governor of Texas needs to take a look in the mirror of the chaos that he is causing for this country. This is not just a Chicago dynamic. He is attacking our country. The sensibility and the civility of our country, he is undermining that. Free. It's all good. We good. This man looked like he wanted to cry. He was going off on Greg Abbott in this incoherent rant. Wasn't making sense, but I'm like, damn, this guy's breaking down. Then we got reports about him having anxiety attacks and he was too stressed out about handling this job. Had to go to the hospital. Like, what the hell? Like, if this is the case, you need to resign. 
if you are so stressed out, you having palpitations, heart issues, you need to be hospitalized, you need to resign because it's not worth it. But what he thought was it was going to be a chill job. It was going to boost his career. Maybe he can go on to be governor. He can be a senator or something like that. He was going to get pats on the back. And, of course, he was going to get some money. Some of those campaign donations, quote, unquote. He thought it was going to be chill. He thought he was going to do what Lori Lightfoot did, Beetlejuice Lori Lightfoot. She did a terrible job as the mayor of Chicago, handled that job horrifically, but she got paid. She got away with being soft on crime and all that. So he said, if Beetlejuice can do it, I can do it. But he comes in, he gets hit with this migrant crisis, all these illegal immigrants flooding Chicago. And on top of that, the criminals immediately saw that this guy is weak and fragile. So guess what? Crime is up now because they know that He's easily influenced by the woke mob. And the woke mob doesn't like police at all. And they're very soft on crime. So since he's weak and fragile, crime is up in Chicago. They're taking advantage of him. So this is yet another embarrassment by Brandon Johnson. But I'm sure it's not going to be the last one. So let me know what you guys think. Leave me your thoughts below. Share the video. Thanks for watching.